you're dealing with refugees. You're hearing stories all the time. What are you hearing from the group of refugees who do have a bill and those who don't? Well, they are complaining about it. Say, they are saying um, it is unfair because they say we come from the same country. We had the same experience. We experienced that. Uh, some of our uh, family members have been kidnapped. We had to pay ransom for these people so that we can get them out of the war-torn country. And after then, when we arrived to Canada, suddenly mm -hmm. we have this two-tier system. Uh, they are appreciative of what the Canadian government have done. And what the Canadian people have done. They are, uh, there is overwhelming response from the Canadian public. How to help? Yes. I am uh, receiving uh, tens of phone calls every day. They are telling me, we have token, we want to give it away. We have furniture. So they are appreciative everything that the Canadian people have done and the Canadian government opened its door. But do, do they understand though the government change that you know laws and, and policies change when governments change? Well uh, to be honest with you uh, they don't understand that. Uh, it is difficult for them to understand even when they were in the embassy in uh, Lebanon mm -hmm. uh, they were asked to sign a bunch of paper they didn't know some of them they didn't know what they were signing for and when they came here one of the persons brought me a letter he said Aris what is this collection agency what this stands for etc he was surprised when I looked at the letter I was surprised how do I explain to a newly arrived refugee of three mm -hmm. months what it means to be on the collection list hit list you, you arrived in Canada as a refugee did you not know that's true from where uh, from Lebanon and what year was that uh, in 78 did you have to pay no, I came uh, at that time, yep. I uh, got my own ticket, I landed in the airport, I claimed the refugee status in Toronto airport. Right. So that was different circumstances. Yep. But you see, the issue with this bunch of people that they are, as I said, they come from the same country, they have the same, and they are part of the same plan that uh, the current government yeah. promised. It was an election promise and they promised they are going to bring 25,000. And some of these people who arrived earlier than November 4th, they are considered or counted towards the, those 25,000 mm. that they promised to bring. But, to but what about if all of them paid then instead of all of them not paying? Well, the government of Canada made a policy. Now, we cannot go back and rethink uh, and to penalize all these people who came after November. But you are saying go back Well, and I'm rethink. saying go back. What I'm saying that to be fair, uh, they have to go back to the day when the, writ, the election rate was dropped. Because this project, this promise was part of the election promise, I think everyone, since the rip writ was mm -hmm. dropped, they should be considered part of this whole 25,000. And that's why, I mean, it's not the issue of dollars and cents. It's an issue of principle. It's an issue of fairness. Well, but it does sound like it's an issue of dollars and cents, because do these refugees have the money? They don't have the money. So it is. I mean, and, uh, uh, some, of them, some of them, they are still unemployed. They are looking for, mm -hmm. some of them, they are doctors, dentists, ar architects. They had pharmacies. They are willing to work with uh, minimum wage just to support their yeah. families. And suddenly they are hit with this kind of uh, uh, bill. It is uh, quite shocking to them. Final question for you, though, Aris. And we are hearing from the minister um, that this is going to be looked at soon, he says. Is that, is that good enough for you? Will you put your faith in, in what the government will decide well, to do with this? I am hoping that the Canadian government will do the right thing. It will stand with the tradition of the Canadian people. And this is part of our legacy, part of our history. And at the end, we are investing in the future of Canada. These people are hard-working people, young people, educated people. Once we give them the supporting hand at the initial stages of their life, they will contribute back. They will be taxpayers. They will volunteer and they will be the future scientists, doctors, sports people, writers, authors, etc. So we are investing in the future of Canada. I want to thank you for your time, sir. A pleasure You're having welcome. you on the program. Pleasure.